Uh, yeah. Just looking up can tell it's gonna be a great day. Look out my window, sunshine on the freeway. For one day I'm getting paid enough. I'm barely out of bed, I'm already blazing up. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there. Today I brought my handy dandy notebook so I can give you the deck everyone's calling Blues Clues. Igby's here. This is basically a mono blue mill deck that uses Sphinx's tutelage to mill cards when we draw off of our clues. And we can play things like fleeting memories. We'll get to all that in a second. Let me show you how I built the deck. Normally I'd start with the creatures in a deck tag, but we're actually not technically playing any creatures in this mono blue deck. So let me just tell you all the stuff that we do use as offense, in air quotes. What we're going to do is we're going to play four copies of Sphinx's Tutelage, three copies of Fleeting Memories, and three copies of Startled Awake. Right now, Tutelage is probably better than it's ever been in Standard. Most of the time it's been in Standard, we've had a format that featured three, four, and sometimes even five color. Uh, decks, so it's really hard to chain triggers, but in this format, even though we've got Eldrazi and obviously people play lands, you kind of have to, um, we see a format with a lot of two and even mono-colored uh, decks. You know, there's mono-white aggro right now, and there's even, you know, mono-red is threatening to be a thing with all the goggles decks that don't even splash colors anymore, they're just mono-red. Um, so, really, right now, you have a better chance of um, chaining triggers uh, on Sphinx's Tutelids than you ever have in standard, so that's cool. Um, fleeting Memories, we have to play a bunch of other stuff that generates clues because Fleeting Memories isn't enough by itself. But I do really like when we get multiples of this out and we just have a clue or two. I think a good way to play Fleeting Memories, at least it has been so far um, from what I've experienced, is to drop it late. You've already generated a clue or two. Fleeting Memories will generate a clue when it comes into play. If you've already got a tutelage in, this can lead to some pretty big mills. So I like Fleeting Memories a little later when you've gotten everything set up. Startled Awake has really impressed me, honestly. Um, even just one casting of this card is great. 13 cards is a lot of cards, but if you cast this twice, it's not like you auto win or anything, but you have milled well over a third of their starting deck. Not to mention the cards that they drew to start the game out, so you've technically milled half of their deck with <laughs> two castings of Startled Awake. This is really nice in that we'll cast Startled Awake, it'll go to our graveyard, we can put it back into play as Persistent Nightmare, and then pop it back to our hand with one of our, what is it, eight different bounce effects, but we'll get to those later. Good trick to have, though, to be able to bounce um, persistent Nightmare. A good way of doing this too is when you have a Persistent Nightmare out, swing with it, and then if they try anything funny, you can pop it back to your hand with an instant speed bounce. Um, and then just cast it again second main phase. Now there are some things that remove this in the format. You know, we have to worry about mostly Declaration and Stone, but also Stasis Snare to a lesser extent. But for the most part, a lot of the removal in the format is just going to put this in our graveyard. We can get it right back out as Persistent Nightmare. And a lot of the time we can just pop it back to our hands. We're playing a lot of bounce. Number one thing a Sphinx's Tutelage deck wants to do, draw cards. That way we can mill cards, we can have card advantage, we just have a good time in general. Um, that's important. <laughs> We're playing blue, so there's a lot of ways of doing it, but we have to pay special attention to generating clues. We have to play a couple of spells that do that outside of just Fleeting Memories. We want to get that combo going, you know, sacrifice a clue, um, you know, mill three with Fleeting Memories, draw the card, mill two with Sphinx's Tutelage. That's always nice to get that engine going. And we want to play defensively. Now, we do have a couple of um, things in blue in this format right here that generate clues. They're low on the curve. They're defensive. Absolutely perfect for this kind of deck. We're going to play four copies of Jace's Scrutiny and four copies of Press for Answers in this deck. Jace's Scrutiny just basically a fog. Same thing with Press for Answers. We have to play it as a sorcery, which is super lame, but I like that it generates the clue. That's why it's sorcery speed is it generates the clue. Um, but we can just tap something, their best creature down for their upcoming attack step on their next turn, and we won't have to worry about taking a huge hit. Then Jace's Scrutiny we can play as an instant and just basically not take damage from one of their bigger creatures and generate the clue. Now, obviously, this isn't going to last for absolutely ever. We can't just, you know, neg four a creature or tap a creature every combat step. Um, for like three turns and end up winning the game. But these definitely go a very, very long way um, in helping us not only survive the early game, which is really, really important, but also generate clues so that in the later game we can f uh, drop the fleeting memories and end up milling a bunch of cards with uh, Sphinx's Tutelage. So I think that these are the best things in blue besides memories that generate clue tokens, mostly because they're very defensive and they only cost two mana apiece. Those are things that we're definitely looking for in this deck. We want to play other stuff that draws cards. I mean, a lot of our deck is going to be based around card draw because of Sphinx's Tutelage. And we want to get to our, our pieces, our Sphinx's Tutelage, our Fleeting Memories, our, you know, Startled Awake, whatever. We want to draw a bunch of cards for a lot of different reasons. 
mostly Sphinx's tutelage. So, in other card drawing news, I'm also going to play three copies of Oath of Jace and one copy of Dragonlord's Prerogative. Prerogative, obviously, four cards is out of control. Like that's that's at least eight mills, and you'll most likely get a chain of at least one or two in there somewhere. So, a prerogative can not only net you three cards, that's huge card advantage, but also mill them out a great deal. So, I at least want to play one prerogative, and I love the speed on it. Um, Oath of Jace, though, interesting for a couple of different reasons. Not only does it draw us three cards enabling three uh, mill triggers on the Sphinx's tutelage, that's important obviously, but we discard two cards. That allows us to discard Startled Awake to Oath of Jace and then put it back on the battlefield as Persistent Nightmare. A very important little piece of synergy to remember. Um, Oath of Jace also, in a little, sort of less budget version of the deck, would allow us to play Drownyard Temple, get a little value out of it too, you know, discard it and then bring it back later. We can actually do that as ramp in some decks with um, Drownyard Temple. But Oath of Jace, just a premium card, period, you know. It's, we've got a lot of three-man enchantments in this deck, but I definitely want to make room for Oath because it enables a little bit of synergy. Um, and it just draws us three cards straight up, which is super powerful. I mentioned earlier that we want to play defensively. That's why we're playing things like Scrutiny and Press for Answers. Well, the rest of our deck is dedicated to defense in some way, shape, or form here. Because we've got to have all the defense. We've got to make it through the early game, and we've got to survive the long game, too. There are some ways of doing it in blue, although this is definitely where the deck is weakest. But let me tell you about our counter magic first, because that's important in a blue deck. I'm going to do three copies of Clash of Wills, one negate and one void shatter in the deck. Void shatter just straight up counter that guy. Don't know, don't or counter that thing. Don't care what it is or how much it costs. Just counter it. Always important to have that. Negate important in this format right now because it counters planeswalkers, which is super important. It also counters collected company and a bunch of other stuff that people are playing right now. It also will counter Dramopus Command when you need it to, um, which you will probably need it to at some point. So negate is always important. I, I'm definitely making a case for it in the main deck um, in this format right now. And the Clash of Wills is sort of your catch-all counterspell. And the most important thing about it is that we can counter spells on turn two pretty much guaranteed. We need as much coverage in the early game as we can get, and Clash of Wills is the best counter spell to accomplish that. And the last defensive element that we're going to employ here is Bounce. Blue has an awful lot of Bounce, and it serves the dual purpose of bringing back, say, Oath of Jace to our hand or Persistent Nightmare to our hand so that we can cast this start of a wake. So let's play all the Bounce we can. And I actually think we have a couple of really, really good options here. So what we're going to do here is play two copies of Disperse, four copies of Engulf the Shore, and two copies of Crush of Tentacles. Disperse is pretty good as sort of tempo-based removal that can take care of a creature or a planeswalker for a turn. Disperse is especially good against planeswalkers and can sort of wipe a high loyalty count, which is always nice. Disperse is also a pretty quick, easy, cheap way to return either um, Persistent Nightmare or Oath of Jace to our hand, which are both good tricks. As far as Engulf the Shore goes, this is one of my favorite blue cards um, in the format. It's one of my favorite cards in the deck, at least. Um, in a deck that focuses primarily on playing islands, this is a really, really good turn four play, and obviously can be good at any point in the game after that as well. And Crush of Tentacles, I think, is a real card in this format. On the seventh turn, we can play a two-mana spell and then a Crush, and return everything to their hand and get an 8-8 giant octopus monster, which is another avenue to uh, victory, which is important in a deck like this. But against things like mid-range and aggro, if we can get to a crush, that can, or that can be absolutely devastating against them. And hell, even against the control decks, crush can be very good, because it's going to return all of their, you know, amazing planeswalkers to their hands. So Crush of Tentacles has just been absolutely great. Here's the land base here, and it's probably the most simple land base I've put out in a while, you know. We want to play all the islands that we possibly can to maximize the value of engulf the shore. It's really, really important to do that. But I couldn't help playing a Blighted Cataract to get a little extra value out of drawing cards late in the game, you know. If we have a Sphinx's Tutelage, it's just, you know, let's mill four and draw two. Yeah, I'll totally do that. Just the one copy, we can sneak it in there. But definitely want to play all the islands that we can because engulf the shores actually is that good. Uh, Engulf the Shore is fan-freaking-tastic. Um, but if you had a couple of bucks, add a, a Drown Yard Temple or two to sort of get a little bit of extra sort of a value, a good interaction with Oath of Jace. And here's our super important sideboard right here with a couple of weird choices. You know, obviously there's the usual suspects. Dispel, Disperse, Negate, these all make sense. Displacement Wave, though, I know we've already got a bunch of bounce effects, but this is technically the cheapest way in the format to bounce uh, bounce a board full of tokens. 
So that's always good to be able to do that. I like Displacement Wave. Um, also because it says Non-Land Permanence, it's another card that says Permanence and not just Creatures. That's another important thing to have um, at our disposal. Hydra Lash, very good against Aggro, and draws you the card, replacing itself and triggering Sphinx's tutelage. Hydra Lash can almost make the main deck, and I'm totally serious about that. Um, we've also got the One Forgotten Creation in the board. Some people might want this in the main, but I found that having to wait until your next upkeep was really a hindrance. The card gets removed a lot. So I want to play it against decks that aren't so key on um, removal, decks that it's more likely to survive a turn against. If it does survive a turn, can always, it can often be freaking ridiculous. Um, Rise from the Tides, yet another path to victory, and this could also be a one of in the main deck, as far as I'm concerned. But Rise from the Tides, really good, again, against certain decks that if you can resolve it, you'll have a bunch of zombies on the battlefield. Tenio's Journal, actually really interesting, again, really good if you can resolve this against a control deck. Uh, fan freaking tastic actually. And there are going to be times where you've already generated a couple of clues, you play your Tamiya's journal, and next turn you can, hey, baby, and next turn you can immediately go tutor something up, which is great if you're looking for a tutelage or a second tutelage, for that matter, maybe a Fleeting Memories, you know, because um, this card is really obviously very good with Fleeting Memories. You can middle three cards a turn, guaranteed, and if you have a tutelage out, that's, you know, the card you're drawing for the turn is another two cards. So the output gets pretty ridiculous fairly fast. And finally, Talon of the Telepath in the sideboard looks weird. It was in the main deck forever. I actually really like the card in this format. It can get a lot of stuff. Against White Black Control, you can get a Read the Bones, you can get a Transgress the Mind, you can get a Duress. That's always super important. Um, even against the Esper Control, you'll get all those cards. So, just, this has actually been fantastic. <laughs> this can cast, like, Collected Companies, which we don't care about at all. But we do want to cast their Collected Company so that they can't. So Talon of the Telepath... It's actually been really nice, and I'd like to make room for it in the main deck. I just, I don't know if that's where it belongs. And here are your power rankings for the deck. A final score of 57, which is actually fairly impressive for a mono blue clues deck, you know. We're a little bit more defensive than it appears we are. Half of our deck or so is dedicated to defense. So even though we don't have the most premium removal in the format, we are playing an awful lot of it, mostly with the goal of getting through the early game and getting set up. If we can do that, we're great. Altogether, the deck has a really good game against a lot of the control decks in the format. Even with all the fancy planeswalkers they play and stuff, they just have a grip full of dead removal. And yeah, they'll play an Ojutai, but we can do things about it. We don't even have to target the Ojutai with most of our removal, like Engulf the Shores, Crush of Tentacles, stuff like that. And we can just play really, really annoyingly <laughs> and end up winning the day if we can prolong the game for long enough. It takes a while to get set up, and we've got a lot of setting up to do, but if we can get it done, we can win the game. Best news is the deck is only going to cost you about 25 30 bucks on TCG Player, with Sphinx's Tutelage and Starter Weight being the most expensive pieces. Other than that, everything is fairly cheap, even the card like Crush of Tentacles, which is seeing some actual standard play. The rest of the list is actually pretty cheap, so... Pick it up. It's not going to cost you too much, and it's a blast to play. That's all we got for now. What are we doing next time? That's important. I got a lot of good response for the idea of doing a burn deck in this standard. I'll probably do that next. That seems important. I also got some response for the mono white control deck that I mentioned, and I do want to bring that to you. I think that deck is really, actually super powerful. I also promised you Jund a couple of weeks ago. I am working on that. Don't worry. And before I go, I just wanted to stick this at the end of the video. I wanted to mention something that I'm super stoked about for like really prideful reasons, but whatever. Um, a couple of weeks ago on the channel, we put up a deck tech for Devil Impact Trimmers. It was a budget double deck tech, you know, one budget, one competitive. And the competitive deck did play one Geist Blast. It's the only thing with the blue mana symbol in the main deck. But other than that, it was just a mono red Impact Trimmers deck that played, you know, four Impact Trimmers, played Pyromancer's Goggles, played the Devils, four Dance with Devils, two Devils Playground. Um, and a bunch of burn and stuff, and a deck just came in 6th place about 5 days ago as the recording of this. Just came in 6th place at the Star City Games um, Super Invitational Qualifier. And I forget where, what the city it was, but it is almost the same exact deck. He plays 4 Impact Tremors, 4 Dance with Devils, 2 Devils Playground, 3 Chandra's, or uh, uh, Pyromancer's Goggles. He also plays all the same, you know, Burn and Madness Suite that we played in that deck. Um, and he plays Dragon Fodder as well, like we did. So, I don't know if we just came up with the same idea around the same time, or if he actually saw the deck and was like, huh, that could work, and then piloted it to sixth place at a relatively large event. I don't know which one happened, but either way, you got good taste, my friend. And I'll leave a link to his deck down there in the description. My wizards, I'm Dev from SBMTG. If you enjoyed the content, like it, 
share, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff that the YouTubers always ask you to do. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, my wizards.